Hey guys, it's uh, IT Ops Guy. Well, we've got our solar winds. It's been installed now for about 12 hours uh, and it's been doing stuff in the background and, and watching over my very small environment. Uh, you can see we've got some events that occurred throughout the night um, and some things that happened. Uh, in fact, we can see that a node rebooted uh, this morning at 1.19 a.m. That is my domain controller. And sure enough, if we go and we look at my domain controller, we can see that its timing is different than everything else. Everything else been up for around 14 hours. That guy's only been up for 10 hours and 32 minutes. So um, it looks like everything is right. Uh, and, and so we're in good shape. But one of the things that I allowed to happen overnight was I left all of the uh, alerts on all the default alerts and there are a ton of them uh, solar winds actually works pretty darn hard for you right out of the box but one of the things that you want to do is look at the enabled alerts that are there from the get-go so you can see that there's 57 of these right now and these are all the alerts some of them i need some of them i don't like i don't even have exchange anywhere within this little test environment so why have solar winds work on those and and check against those things so i'm just going to disable those and, and clean this up a little bit i don't have bgp and i don't have anything azure or aws again uh, site to site vpn let's get rid of that uh, we can leave the SQL stuff. I don't need anything about the VIP. Um, so let's go ahead and disable those things. Any of these alerts that you can get rid of, your SolarWinds environment is going to be better and faster. Um, I don't have an F5. I don't have AWS. I don't have Azure. We don't have SD-WAN. Um, so again, let's just go ahead and disable those things. And we're just continuing down the list here. We don't need HA. We'll leave groups. We're going to talk about groups um, for a little bit. Um, let's get rid of that as well. And let's just go to the next page. Um, so let's let's come over here. Um, whether it failed, we don't have any Palo stuff. Again, no SD WAN. Let's get rid of that. No switch stack in this environment. No VPC. So. Um, that will get us cleaned up quite a bit. So now let's see, we've got a couple of pages of alerts. Let's look at uh, 100 total. And so we have 28 enabled alerts and that's much better, especially for, for this environment. But even so, you know, let, let's plan like we are um, gonna have a bigger environment. One of the first things that you're gonna to wanna to look at are custom properties. Because with custom properties, you can do a lot of stuff in conjunction with it. Um, so let's, let's go and look at um, custom properties. And one of the first ones that I wanna create is a custom property called criticality, right? So these are the ones that, that you know, come out of the box with solar winds. But custom properties, we could spend a ton of time on um, everything that you can do with them, but I just wanna hit on them really quick and show you how to use a custom property in conjunction with an alert. So let's say um, criticality is what we're gonna call this. Determines the criticality of the node and whether or not an alert should go out. Um, and let's see, we can do, eh, I think text is, is going to be fine. Let's say the value must be specified and we're going to do a drop down list. So we're going to have a value called critical, not critical. Really that's all I need. I need critical and I need not critical. You might have other ones here like urgent or urgent when only running in a certain location. Um, but I, I don't, I'm only gonna use critical and not critical for now. And I'm gonna say that I want this available in alerts and groups um, for filtering, for reports. Now I'm saying the value must be specified. So 
one of the options that I have is save and assign values. So I'm gonna do that. Very easy to do when I've only got four nodes. Um, I understand it could be much more difficult, right? Or I'm sorry, I've got five nodes in here. Um, so I'm gonna say that my SolarWinds server, my SQL server, which my SolarWinds server depends on, my domain controller, which my entire domain depends on, these three things are critical. So I'm gonna say edit the custom property. Well, that is not what I'm gonna say. Huh, all right, well, I'm gonna do it a different way because I don't like how they did it. So let's come in here and let's go domain controller, SQL and solar winds. I'm gonna click edit properties for all three of these nodes. And I should have one called criticality and I'm gonna say that it's critical. And I'm just gonna go ahead and save those. And now I've got a couple of other boxes. Now you can see they're broken up by vendor. Let's say no grouping. That way I can say uh, my QNAP NAS and my Web01. Let's edit those and let's say the criticality is not critical. And let's submit. Now, for my custom pullers, I like to be able to see um, especially several of them. And so um, what I'm gonna do is click this little button and then find my criticality here. That way it will show it on the screen. And now I don't have any guesswork. I can go and look at this and I can say, okay, I know DC01 is critical. I know my QNAP is not. I know my SQL is not. But there's other cool things you can do too. Like if I had a giant list of these, I could just view it by the criticality. What's critical, what's not, right? And so you can group by those things and filter by them. You can create automatic groups. But what I wanna show you is how we use that custom property in conjunction with an alert. So we're gonna come over here to manage alerts. Now I've been getting alerts um, that a component has been going down um, as part of my SQL Server application. I'm gonna take that off. I don't need to know that. Um, but when the application goes down, I do want to um, take a look at this one. This one's very important. So let's go ahead and click on this guy. Now you can see it's an out of the box alert. So this guy cannot be changed, but what we'll do is we'll end up duplicating it so let's say duplicate and edit. And I just like to throw something in here like, you know, modified. Uh, that way I know. Now it's evaluating the trigger condition every minute. That's quite excessive. I'm gonna change it to five. But what I wanna say, especially on this page is you know, the pulled status is not equal to down. The application is equal to down. And, so let's go and, um, so we're gonna do another comparison here. And the nodes criticality is equal to critical. So all of those things must be true in order for this alert to now fire off because why do I care about boxes that are not critical? I mean, you have to have them, I get that, but why fill up your mailbox with a bunch of stuff you don't care about? Now I've got you know both of these alerts that are there. Um, they're fine for right now, we'll just leave them. And we're gonna say submit. Now I've got two of those uh, applications, both of them turned on. And so I wanna make sure that um, that they're not both going to fire, right? So um, we've got, oh, let's go, oh, alert me when an application goes down. So we're going to turn that one off. And mine, we're going to turn on. So that way I've taken down theirs, I've added mine, I know it's good to go. Now I'm only gonna get alerts when something critical actually fires and takes an application down. 
And that's all I've got for you right now, guys. Thank you very much.